This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering, news and articles. Hi, my name is Tom Lopelli. I'm a Magic developer who works for Wizards, and I was the lead designer of the Magic Online Cube that is being played here at the Players' Championships. Cubing is like... A normal draft, except you don't use booster packs, instead you use a bunch of cards that you like, that you picked, you sleeve them up, put them in a box, shuffle them up, make packs, and pretend you're drafting like with, you, with a normal booster like you would. With doing that, you get to choose the kind of experience you have. The cube that the people here at the Players' Championships are playing with is designed to replicate the entire history of constructed magic, but if that's not your thing, then do whatever you want. Limited is my thing. I love 40 card decks, and Cube is kind of the pinnacle of that, right? It's the highest level that you can get as far as power level goes, and I really wanted to see what the pro level players would put together from the Cube that we've been playing on Magic Online for quite a while. I mean, I've done a lot of Cubes, like a Cube for years and years, and but uh, once we had the actual list for the MTGO Cube that we were going to use, we played online, played some, some real life. Uh, yeah, you know. Probably did 20, 25 drafts, is my guess. Well, Cube was only available on Magic Online for one week this summer, but that week uh, I cleared my schedule, took off from work, turned off my cell phone, basically did nothing but, but play for that whole week, and I was able to get in uh, about 60 drafts. So I have a really great group at home, uh, just locally, that you know we have multiple cubes and like a really good group, so I uh, was able to cube just with local friends you know, multiple times a week, so I ended up getting a lot of cube drafts in because of that. I think I built my first cube at Gen Con in 2006, so that's like six years ago. This is long before I ever thought it could be real that I could work for Wizards. So I built it, and it was the most fun thing, and in the local area I became known for the guy who had the awesome cube. So I would take it to events everywhere, and people would be happy when I showed up, which was cool. So I get into Wizards partially because I get known for that, which is great. And I have this dream always quietly in the back of my head that we get to do Cube on Magic Online. I think the Cube is fantastic for high level play. I think that the players love it and that's the first thing. I mean when you, when you get a format that, that the players themselves are really excited about, it translates to the games, it translates to them. You can see them on Twitter tweeting about it, you know they're posting on Facebook, my deck's cool, that kind of stuff. And then it also just gets to show off some really high level play. All the way from the drafting to the deck building to the actual playing of the matches, it just there's so many different options that you have uh, in cube that you don't in other limited formats. I think it's just fantastic for high level play, and hopefully we'll be doing it again. The only thing that surprised me a lot is that some of the players who come from areas of the country that don't have cube a lot just have very different ideas about what cube decks should look like. I talked to Tsu Cheng Kuo about this, and he was a little bit frustrated about preparing for the event because with his time zone and other various factors, he was not able to get a lot of practice time in, and there aren't people in Asia who cube draft, from what he said, which is interesting. So I saw him, after complaining to me about how he had no idea what was going on and was very worried, turn to a cop of the hammer off of an orcish lumberjack, and that's something I've never seen anyone do before. I saw Junya Ianaga play against Brian Kibler do some really interesting things with a black-white deck, which is, to me, not a traditionally strong archetype, but he was sun-tightening in Phyrexian Ragers that had died. He had Skull Clamp, Keldoran Outpost going, he had Skull Clamp, Hero of Bladehold going, and just a bunch of things that were powerful cards interacting powerfully. And Brian Kibler's deck, to me, looked like a more standard, conventional wisdom, American-style cube deck, if you'll indulge me for saying that. But it didn't matter because Junior just had some really powerful stuff that beat him. So it's been really interesting looking at the different perspectives that players from other regions have brought. So I know when I was playing a lot and traveling a lot, I did cube drafts with Paolo and with Luis and people like that, but I never had the chance to play with, say, Yuya Watanabe. So. That's been a lot of fun to see what they do. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't know when and if we're doing it. I hope we are. I think it's fantastic. I also think it's great for people to see it at home and then be like, I want to try that and maybe build their own cube. 
I just, you know, live cubes are fantastic. I got a chance to draft with Adam Saborski's cube this weekend. That was super fun. Also, the Magic Online cube, we had a live version. I got to draft with that. You can go on Magic Online and do it as well. Any of those are really great, and, and I think that showcasing it at the high level lets it kind of trickle down to everybody else because it's still, you know, as popular as it is among the enfranchised player, it's still kind of a corner format for, uh, for players that aren't quite as deep, and I think it would be really awesome if it could be wider. To me, the next evolution of Cube is just to get more people to accept that they can turn their cubes into whatever they want. I know for me, I grew up playing serious constructed Magic, so... When I went to build a cube, I tried to replicate the experiences that I loved, which is high-level constructed magic tournaments. But though that's good, there's a lot of people who think that's what cube means still. And I know there are tons of people with proper cubes and gold cubes and whatever out there, but there are still a ton of people that when you say cube, they imagine what you're seeing here. I would really love to get to the point where more people are willing to just go out on a, li on a limb and create the cube that they want to play, because it's so easy. You just find the cards you want to play with and sleeve them up and go. But to me, that's that's just the biggest thing right now, and I feel like it hasn't helped that we have an official cube on Magic Online. I kind of thought when we were naming it to make sure that we didn't say it was the cube. We said it was the Magic Online cube, so it was like, you can have a different one and it's okay, but that message I think is a little bit subtle for some people, and I think not everyone is, is getting that, but yeah, if you have a thing you like to do with Magic, make a cube that does it and go draft, I mean, we're not going to come stop you, and, and if anybody else does, you should tell them that they're a jerk and do what you want to do anyway, so yeah.